So in this video, I want to talk about failure. And I want to talk about failure because we just spent months and months and months working on this Kickstarter campaign that took so much effort, many hours, many days, many weeks of work. And we have been working on this for, I want to say, three to six months. And now that we have put the Kickstarter campaign out there, we realize that unfortunately it has been a failure and it's not going to work out. And most likely, if not today, over the next few days, we're going to have to cancel it and pull the plug and basically take it out from being out there in the world. Because if it doesn't work for the first three days, a week or so, then it's a failure from you know, like Kickstarter's uh, standpoint. It doesn't work and it never gets bigger than that. Now, even though I'm saying this, there's actually a positive view around this. And I like to actually spin it always positively because I do think that there's a lot to learn from failures. And there's a lot of people out there that refuse to actually accept failures um, and take them very personally and never really learn from them. And I also think that there's so many people out there that actually celebrate the wins and never talk about the failures. When in reality, at least from my experience, nine times out of 10 is failure and then you get that one win and it feels amazing when you get it but you need to actually kind of like learn and adjust from every single failure that you go through and this is just one out of many that we'll have as a company as proxima for myself as a leader is going to be a tough ride so let's talk about failure let's talk about how we actually got to this point which is incredibly heartbreaking however how we actually moving forward from here and what are we going to do going forward, not only personally, but also how you actually can actually deal with failure as well, because I do think that there's a lot of that going on, especially with all the layoffs and how the industry is right now and how difficult it is to make it out there as a game studio, as a developer. So I'm going to share, I'm going to share and hopefully it resonates with you guys and it's not too much of a negative video for all of you. Anyways, let's get started with this video. All right, so for all those that are new here, my name is Harvey Newman. I've been in games development for 20 plus years, and now I am a studio owner, and we are working in this game called Warship Jolly Roger. And uh, the game is going absolutely fantastic, and this idea for this Kickstarter started from the idea of like wanting to share what it is like to develop a game and also create a studio from the ground up. So this is what we talked about internally as a team. We all enjoy the idea. We all about sharing inside the team. And we thought maybe the public is ready for this. Maybe there's like a need for like people knowing what's going on behind the scenes, especially for all those that actually want to maybe create a studio one day, especially for all those that actually want to maybe be part of a smaller developer instead of a AAA developer. So, you know, if I am a fan of docuseries, the rest of the team is, fan of, is a fan of docuseries and documentaries about, you know, success stories, maybe people are actually willing to actually be part of this story as well as we try to make it, right? So we thought it was absolutely fantastic. We enjoyed it. We shot a pilot for it, uh, which is really, really cool. I'm going to put it out there for people to watch at any point so you guys can, you know, reference it in the future. But we kind of like started with this idea about six months ago and then started working towards it including shooting the pilot creating the graphics finding out about kickstarter how to work best with kickstarter and we even got kickstarter to be on board with us because they really loved what we we're doing and how the idea was original and it hasn't been done before and they were rooting for us and they got us on the projects we love which is really really awesome and it's a blessing so thank you kickstarter for that blessing but for us, it kind of felt like this was a really, really cool idea. So with the goal of the whole campaign, if successful, was to basically make six videos for the whole year, taking you guys from GDC to every single month until Gamescom and after Gamescom to basically tell you about, you know, the story of a developer trying to actually not only make a game, but also, you know, look for funding, also, you know, trying to make sure that the team is together, is happy, we are creative, we are kind of like talking about ideas, you know, all that stuff that goes behind the scenes that you guys don't get to see. It was to showcase all that stuff as best as possible. So you have a little bit of that fly on the wall kind of situation. So that was what we wanted to deliver. Those videos for you guys every single month 
from April onwards, we're going to deliver one video a month, put it on, on Kickstarter first and then on YouTube, people see it, people love it, fingers crossed. And then, you know, we kind of like get you guys to kind of like be on board with us, almost like, you know, part of the team and all that stuff. And we love that idea and we're like so enamored with this idea and we really wanted it to work. Now, the other reason why we wanted it to work is because the state of the industry right now is so bad that studios that like ours that are trying to be on the double A side, right? Not quite triple A, not quite indie. Um, like, I think we have to think outside the box in order to get funding and also in order to actually get visibility, right? What's out there right now, especially in AAA, the marketing, the all that stuff, I don't think is working for the most part. And people feel all the time that they're actually getting sold something that is gonna be just repetition or some of the same things and rarely become something unique. I mean, you have like, you know, the Helldivers, right? Or Elden Ring that are very unique games. But for the most part, normally, Especially nowadays, people are kind of going, this is just recycle and repeat, recycle and repeat, and it's more of multiplayer and stuff like that. So I think that we have to think outside the box when it comes to those things, right? How can I get funding? How can I get visibility? How can I get a community to come along with us, to be able to be part of the community, to be play out, to play our game, to give us feedback, all of that stuff. So this was our take on thinking outside the box to hopefully bring you guys along and actually see a little bit of what it is to kind of like be part of Proxima, right? Without being part of Proxima. So that was the idea overall. And here comes the failure. Now, the failure came because we, even though we actually kind of like gather a few people to make sure that they actually have, we have attention, even though like, you know, between myself and quite a lot of other team members, we, we are known out there and we have fans and thousands of people following us. We thought we had enough to actually kind of drive the project forward. Um, and, you know, all the boxes were kind of ticked for the most part. We could have done more of it, but all the boxes were kind of ticked. We, we even talked with people that advised us and kind of like give us like, you know, really good tips on how to get there. And we may, managed to make all of those things go, including the graphics, including the page that look fantastic. Kickstarter was so happy with the page, but we put it out there fully thinking, okay, we're just gonna build momentum, have one day, three days a week. And then, you know, people will start coming more and more. And eventually, you know, with pushing ads, videos, snippets, shorts, we'll get, actually get the ball rolling. Unfortunately, even though we started well for the first few hours, things kind of died down and then they got like, you know, they stagnated. And the stagnation is the problem because the between the first day and the second day, there was not much of a change. And now between the second day and the third day, which is today, there is also no change. And that is a problem because then obviously the Kickstarter algorithm starts kind of putting you on the back of the queue. The, pro the project gets buried, all that work gets buried and all that stuff. So failure, right? And it sucks. It sucks big time because it feels like we put so much work into this. So here's what I've done. I just yesterday, we have a weekly meeting on Wednesday here at Proxima. So I normally talk to the team and ask, here's what we have. We have two options. We can continue going or we can cancel it now and maybe try again in the future. Everybody was in, a, in an agreement that we should basically cancel it and then try again in the future. And the reason why is because we kind of have to actually be, I think, a little bit bigger in terms of studio, in terms of a game, in terms of being known, for people to actually be able to adhere to this idea of wanting to know what goes on behind the scenes. That's my take, right? I think the reason why people are not really warm to it is not only that this the Kickstarter is not about the game, we're not really kind of like getting the money for the game to the, make the game, we are getting money to make a docu-series about the game, but also the game is not out there yet, doesn't have a big fan base, doesn't have like, we are not known as a company as well. So I think this is why maybe things flatlined a little bit. Not only the idea of having something different that is not a game, but also who are Proxima, who is Jolly Roger, right? Or like with a game. So I think that's basically where the failure came through and that's the learning that we get. Now, what did we get from it? And this is the positive of it all, I think that is very important for you to test your ideas in real life. There's a lot of people that have a lot of ideas in their minds and then they never really put it out there for fear of failure. And I think that for us, what we actually gained is that we had an idea 
we executed the idea to the utmost of our abilities. We actually did our best effort possible, put our best foot forward, and then we put it out in the world, and then we get to see what the world thinks about this idea in the best way possible. And to me, I feel at peace if I know that I give it my best or we gave it our best and we failed because I feel like only by giving your best, you know where you stand. And if you fail, you can learn from those things, grab them, analyze them over time, which we will over the next few months, and then learn from them and then try again later, right? With that knowledge. And I think that's the only way that you can grow. No game studio, no idea, no, no person has ever grown to be absolutely amazing with no failure in between. And I genuinely believe that failure is what makes you more resilient. And just like I talk here about animation and the best animators out there and stuff, when you look at the best animators out there and they're absolute legends, um, I am pretty sure if you ask every single one of them about their failures, they'll have stories for days, right? But the only things that you hear is about the movies they worked on, the things that they worked, like the achievements, the Oscars, whatever it is, the awards and all that stuff, because that's what people like to hear. But there is a lot of failure there underneath, kind of like building a foundation for good things to kind of like be like, you know, built upon. And that is basically where we kind of put this failure, right? Like at, at the foundation, one of the foundations of Proxima. We grabbed it, we learned from it, we put our best foot forward, we tried our best, didn't work out, but at least we are at peace that we tried our best and now we're gonna move forward from here. So that's what we actually see, that's what I see, that's what the team feels, and we're all happy about the fact that, you know, we tried. We tried and it's, it's all good, right? At least you tried. And that's the best way that you can think about this. And especially you personally, as an animator, as an artist, as a game, want to be a game developer. Like when you think about applying for a job, when you think about like, you know, if you lost your job because of the layoffs, the fact that you know that you've done your best in the job, that you've done your best and you're sure real and you didn't get it, I think should give you a little bit of peace inside to know that you've tried your absolute best even though you failed, it's not a personal thing. It's not on you, it's on the others. And then you learn from others and then you grab that knowledge and you make yourself better. And step by step, you will actually grow and get to be better. So this video, hopefully in the future, like hopefully two years from now, a year from now, I'll look back at this and go, wow, like I thought that was really important and it was horrible. And turns out here we are a year or two from now, you know, singing praises and doing great things, right? I hope this is true and I hope this is the future for us. I truly hope so. But I hope also that this helps you in your journey because keeping it honest goes a long way in this industry. And all of us at Proxima are very honest with everything that we're trying to do, including this docu-series I wanted to make for you guys. But we'll put pause on it. We'll try again in a year's time when Proxima hopefully is more known and the game is more known. And then hopefully we'll get some more traction. And if we get some more traction, then we can make it happen then. Not now, but then. A little bit too early, I think. So, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A little bit of a story time, a little bit of a downer, but with a happy ending, I hope. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you're here still with me right now. And comment below as well about your thoughts about the Kickstarter, about Proxima, about you know the story that I just told you and about failure overall. It's um, something that people are allergic to, but I do think that it's almost like a best friend. You should embrace it so you can become better. See you guys next week. Until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace. Peace.